Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas and it's going to be yet another session in this lecture series on engineering drawing. And today we'll be taking up one more problem from projection of solids which we'll be solving with the help of the change of reference method or the auxiliary plane method. So let's see what the problem has in store. Here we go. Well, it goes like this, a square prism base 40 mm side and height 65 millimeters. So this in front of you is a square prism height 65 and it has a square top, square bottom, all these sides are 40 millimeters each. Watch next. Has its axis inclined at 45 degrees to the HP. So it's going to be something like this. Axis inclined. So axis starts from here, center top, center bottom. That's the axis making an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal plane. Okay. So now it also has an edge of its base on HP. So one of the bases, let's say this one will always remain in absolute contact with the ground with the HP you can see okay and at the same time it also makes a certain angle with the BP how much it's 30 degrees so it can make an angle like this if you extend this the angle made over here okay with the VP is going to be equal to 30 degrees and that can only be seen from the top right so that was all about the positioning and our initial assumption completely depends on the axis inclination here the axis is inclined to the horizontal plane so our initial assumption is going to be like this. We are going to assume that the entire solid for step one is going to be resting with its base on HP. And then we just got to think from where can we see the true shape? Well, the answer is pretty obvious. True shape can only be seen from the top. Therefore, we have to begin by making the top view first. So let's begin. Let's say we have four corners at the top in the form of one, two, three, four, four corners exactly at the bottom in the form of five, six, seven and eight so it's going to be something like this top bottom and let's take a look at this from the front this rectangle is something which is going to be visible to you okay and to be very precise let me tell you you're going to see this rectangle two three seven eight seven six okay height is how much it's 65 that's the axis so four corners at the top right two in the front one at the back two dash one dash okay and three dash four dash at the bottom we have 5, 6, 7, 8, therefore 6 can be seen initially and behind 6 we have 5, so 6 dash, 5 dash and here we have 7 dash and 8 dash. So that was all about the initial position but what we've got to do is we have got to incline the axis. In the change of reference method we don't do this, we don't change the position, rather we have a reference plane or an auxiliary plane kept in such a way that it is going to make an angle of 45 degrees with the axis itself. Okay, so let me show you how that can be done. We're going to have an auxiliary plane over here, an auxiliary inclined plane onto which we'll be having the auxiliary top view. Now, this auxiliary inclined plane will be making an angle of 45 degrees with the axis. And if you watch carefully, this plane is actually passing through 7 dash, 8 dash. Why? There is a very specific reason. Now, where is that reason? Edge of its base on HP. So now, since one base edge, let's say 7 dash, 8 dash, has to remain in contact with the ground, with the horizontal plane, therefore, this auxiliary plane is also in contact with this 7 dash 8 dash. It's that simple. Now let's take a look at this from over here. Okay, let me have the projector lines from all these points. It's going to be something like this. Very easy to draw. It can be done simply with the help of a mini drafter. Okay, so what essentially we are doing is we are creating the auxiliary top view on an auxiliary inclined plane. So this top view's reference has to be taken into account. How can that be done? Let me show you. The arcs of all these eight points are to be taken with respect to x, y and they have to be put up over here with respect to x1, y1. Let's say we want to locate point one. So keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here and with that much amount as the radii and then with this as center, you need to cut an arc and that's going to be point one. Repeat the same step for point two. Keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here at two with that much amount as the radii and with where is the line for two? This guy is the center. Cut an arc and that's going to be point two. You have to repeat the same step six, uh, six more times and you're going to get this. That's it. Now listen to what I say. This is something which appears as a line from the front. It appears as a line. Okay. This. Although it's a square. Right. We are looking at this from over here. And we have an auxiliary inclined plane over here. From here. This square is going to be visible to us. This rectangle is also going to be visible to us. What is the name of this square? It's 1, 2, 3, 4. What is the name of this rectangle? This rectangle, this rectangle I'm talking about. It's 1, 2, 6, 5. 
So these two surfaces are going to be visible to us directly and hence we are making them. That's it. Okay, so what's not visible? This 7 dash 8 dash is not going to be visible to us. So it has to be given some respect in the form of a hidden line. So let me draw that quickly. Here we go. And let me have the axis. That's the axis. Done. Okay, so we have the auxiliary top view. Now from top view, we have to go for front view. And for front view, what we need to do is we need to have an auxiliary vertical plane. Okay guys, now in the final step, we have to go for edge inclination. So edge is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees with the VP. Where is that edge? This is the edge, which is in contact with the HP, but it makes, but it makes a certain angle. This edge it makes a certain angle with the vertical plane also. So instead of repositioning this edge at an angle of 30 degrees with the vertical plane, what we'll do is in change of reference method, we'll have an auxiliary vertical plane over here this way which is going to make an angle of 30 degrees with this edge. Let me show you, that's 30 degrees. Now this is something that you have got to implement on your drawing sheets or in AutoCAD, wherever. Anyways, now the stuff is again same. From all these points you need to draw or you need to produce lines which are perpendicular to this x2, y2. Okay, so this in fact is an auxiliary vertical plane onto which the auxiliary front view will be obtained. Okay, something of this sort. We are looking at this from over here. These are all the projector lines and now the method is pretty simple. What are we doing from the top view? We are creating the final front view over here. So the front view before this one is over here. Okay. So in order to make this front view with respect to X, Y or with respect to X to Y two, this front view has to be taken as reference and you need to take arcs of all these points with respect to X one, Y one. Let me reiterate this once again. This is the final front view. And before this, we have this as the front view. Okay, so this final front view will be made with respect to x2, y2. All right, and this is the initial front view. What we need to do is we need to take arcs of all these points with respect to x1, y1, and we need to put them up over here with respect to x2, y2. Let's say we want to locate point one. So keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here, right? With that much amount as the radii, and then with this as the center, this is the line for one, you need to cut an arc and that's going to be point one. You can do the same stuff for two also. Okay, keep one leg over here, other leg over here. And with this as the center, you need to cut an arc and that's going to be point two dash. Let's say we want to locate point three. So keep one leg of your compass here, other leg at x1, y1 over here. And with that much amount as the radii and we come here and we travel here. And with this as the center, you need to cut an arc and that's going to be point three. 3 dash in fact in the same manner you can locate the remaining points okay and let me tell you what's going to be visible just think about this guys this rectangle 1 2 5 6 is going to be visible to us from over here right this face also 5 6 7 8 will also be visible directly to us so let me make them dark 5 6 7 8 visible 1 2 5 6 is also visible and apart from that this portion which appears as a line, okay, which appears as a line from the top. It's not a line, but it's also a rectangular face that is also going to be visible for us or visible to us. So these are <coughs> apparently uh, the edges which are directly visible and the ones which are not visible has to be given some respect in the form of hidden lines. And here we go. That's it. That's the auxiliary front view, final front view obtained for this square prism whose axis is inclined at 45 degrees with respect to the horizontal plane and the base edge which is in contact with the ground in contact with the horizontal plane making a certain angle 30 degrees with the vertical plane. Whew. Anyways, so guys, that was all from my side for today. If you've got any doubt or query, do write them down in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer them. And if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering drawing or engineering graphics, then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel, and also press the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you get a notification to get an update. And do tell your friends about this channel so that they can also benefit. I'm going to be back with more such videos on drawing and mechanics. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care. Have a great day. Keep learning. Keep drawing.